Hello everyone, hope you're doing okay. Today we're talking about the Vengeance Juggernaut. Vengeance Juggernaut, a very fun melee spec. If you want to do a lot of damage, this might be the spec for you. Brief disclaimer, as always, I'm not an expert. I'm just a nerd that knows a lot of Swole Thor. So if you have anything else you want to add to this guide, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Help out your fellow players. All right, let's get into it. For your tertiary stats, if you click in your character pane at this details pane, you can see all of your existing stats. You want to shoot for like 110% accuracy, and then you want like 7.2% alacrity. That should compensate for most of your lag issues. For our tactical, we're going to take Hemophilic Slash for single target. Uh, this is going to refresh all of our bleeds on the target and also tick all of our dots. Dot stands for damage over time abilities. Um, so it's free way to keep your dots on the target for longer and then just get a little extra damage out of that ravage. For our legendary, we're gonna take the Champion's Precisions package. It's gonna be a free extra 20% crit every time we use our Blood Rage, which is very, very nice. And then we're going to take the Fearless Victor package, which is just free 10% melee damage all the time, which is very, very handy. For our combat style on single target, we're gonna take the 20% extra damage or 50% extra damage on Shatter, and then the reduction of the cooldown is very, very useful to us. Uh, we're also gonna take Projected Scream, which is very, very useful. You can take Sweeping Slash, but between Projected Scream and uh, Vengeful Slam, we have enough AOE as it is, so it's just easier to use Projected Scream. We're gonna take Bleeding Offense, which is going to do a little bit extra damage on our Impale, and it's going to increase the critical chance of our Impale by 20%. We're also gonna take Blood Rites here. Uh, blood Rites means that our um, Blood Rage no longer generates rage immediately, uh, but instead will increase the critical chance of all of our bleed effects by 50%, and then we'll generate rage every time that those bleeds crit. Um, so very, very useful ability to us. It's just more crits, more crits is always helpful to us. Moving up the tree here, I take Extended Roar. We don't have a lot of range abilities on uh, Vengeance, so you get a little bit of extra range here. Additionally, uh, Force Push is gonna do a little bit more damage, and it'll let you use your uh, Force Scream at a little bit extra damage. So uh, it's, it's a very, very nice, gives you a little extra bit of range. Moving the line here, uh, H or Hardened Defense is very useful in PvE content. It's a 60% uh, damage reduction whenever you use your Threatening Scream. So for every standing and stupid that you shouldn't be standing in, you can just pop that Threatening Scream and you will take uh, much less damage than you would have taken otherwise. Moving the line here, this one's kind of dealer's choice. If you're gonna be focused a lot, if you're going to be uh, in solo content, you can take Saber Reflect if you want to. You can take Intimidate Warp Roar if you want to, but for the most part, just take that Mad Dash. It's probably gonna be more useful to you. And then finally, moving the line here, this these options all kind of bite. Um, crushing Fist, the useful part is the Sunder, but we already get Sunder out of our um, Sundering Assault and our Saber Throw, so it's not that useful, but it beats a poke in the eye. You can take through Passion if you really feel like you're gonna get tunneled a lot, but it's, it's not that useful. So those are the basics about what the utilities are gonna be taking as a Vengeance Juggernaut. Let's now talk about the basics of actually doing damage as Vengeance. Vengeance is a Builder Spender spec. So if you see here, underneath your character pane, you're gonna slowly be building these little bubbles. These are bubbles of rage. We use the rage and build rage by using low damaging abilities and then spend that rage on high damaging abilities. So our goal is to effectively build rage and then spend that rage in a way that does a boatload of damage. There are a couple ways that we can build rage. The most obvious one's gonna be our force charge. Especially as a melee class, we need to have this force charge available whenever a target gets away with from us. So that way we can, you know, reintroduce them to our fist. So force charge, leap to the target and build three rage. Our next way of building rage is gonna be through Sundering Assault. Sundering Assault generates, I think, seven rage. It's a boatload of rage. It also sunders the target, reducing their armor, which means they're gonna take more damage, which is very, very helpful to us. Sundering Assault is our primary way of generating a boatload of rage very, very quickly. Another way to generate some rage uh, is through Saber Throw. Saber Throw will build three rage and does a moderate amount of damage. It can be used from any range or up to 30 meters. Um, and so it is kind of like our secondary way of generating rage in combat. There is a third way of generating rage in combat, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So those are three builders. Again, that would be Force Charge with three, Sundering Assault with seven, and then Saber Throw with three. Now we need to talk about our dots. As I mentioned previously, dots stand for damage over time abilities, and we have three of them. 
First is going to be Impale. Impale will hit the target for about 30k damage, which is very, very nice. And additionally, Impale will actually also lead a bleed on the target for about 12,000 damage over the next six seconds. So it's a pretty substantial bleed over that brief period of time. So our goal is to have Impale off of cooldown as often as possible. Additionally, we have our Shatter. Shatter does like 15k damage in the initial hit, which isn't terrible, but then it does 18k over the next 12 seconds, which is very, very strong. Shatter is one of our primary dots. Additionally, we have one final dot here in the form of our Force Scream. Now you're gonna notice here that as you're going through and hitting your buttons on Vengeance, you're gonna be building these little stacks of Savagery. What Savagery does, if you have two stacks, it means your Force Scream will start to glow. Now Force Scream will automatically crit every single time. Additionally, Force Scream will leave a little bit of a six second dot on the target. It's very, very useful. It is one of our primary dots. So those are our three primary dots. Again, that would be Impale, Shatter, and Force Scream. Now there's a couple of ways that these dots interact with each other. The first, as we mentioned from our tactical, is through Ravage. Now you're gonna notice that a lot of our dots are actually pretty short. So you can see here, if we just use three abilities, our bleed from Impale is already coming off cooldown. Uh, but if we use our Ravage, all these dots will be reticked, and then we'll refresh on the target. So it's an easy way to extend the duration of those rather short dots. So that way you, you juice a little bit more damage out of them. Um, and that is how Ravage operates. It doesn't have any rage consumption. It just refreshes and ticks all the docs you have on the target. Speaking of dots on the target, we also have our Vengeful Slam. Vengeful Slam actually generates one, um, one rage and will spread all of your dots to neighboring targets. So say if I'm tunneling into this target and we use dots and then dots, oh, all the dots are running. If I hit this target with my Vengeful Slam, any other target in the area will be now have all of our dots spread to them. It's very, very handy. It's an easy way to fluff that extra damage. One final way that you're gonna see these interactions is with Glowing Hue. Now, Hue is normally only usable on targets below 30% health. But thanks to our tree in Vigilance, we have free hues. Well, not free hues, you, you still have to spend rage on them. However, you can use hue on any target, regardless of what health they're at, whenever hue is glowing. This makes hue a very, very useful ability to us. It is one of our primary filler abilities and it does a moderate amount of damage. Love to see it, free damage, we love to see it. Additionally, we have a couple other spenders here, for example, Vicious Slash. Vicious Slash consumes three rage and then gives you one back, so it's technically only two rage. Um, it's not that good of an ability, but it beats a poke in the eye. It does a moderate amount of damage, but we try not to use it as often as possible. And then if everything is going downhill, if you have shamed the ancestors and don't have any rage, you need to hit the assault button. Assault does basically no damage, but it does generate two rage. So if you find that you're getting stuck, you don't have any ways to generate any more rage, you can use Assault if you really need to. Just know that I'm gonna cry when you do. So try not to use Assault whenever possible. Okay, let's talk about some general rules about playing the, the Vengeance Juggernaut. The first rule is that if you don't have focus, I'm sorry, I keep referring to the, jug the Jedi abilities. If you don't have rage, you need to build rage. So we're prioritizing building rage before anything else in this rotation. Because if you're out of rage, you're not doing any damage. So if you are running out of rage, if you have no rage to work with, build a rage. But normally just through Sundering Assault, you should have rage throughout the rest of the rotation. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. So that's rule number one. If you don't have rage, get angry, build some rage. Now let's talk about the actual rotation. The rotation itself is only six abilities long but it fluctuates between fixed ability, filler, fixed ability, filler, fixed ability, filler. So let's only talk about these fixed abilities first, and then we'll discuss our filler priorities. So the fixed abilities in order will be impale, then filler, then force scream, then filler, then vengeful slam, then filler. The reason we're doing this is because they all share the same cooldown and we're gonna have free auto crits on our four screen and Impale just does so much damage that we need to be smashing it as often as possible. And finally, the 
the rage generated by vengeful slam is very very useful and it just does a lot of damage so those are our three fixed abilities so if you're at your keyboard we can practice this now opening up we need rage so run number one build that rage going through the rotation now let's go impale filler force screen filler vengeful slam filler repeat impale filler force screen filler vengeful slam filler again impale Filler, four screen, filler, vengeful slam, filler. If you can nail these basic fixed to position uh, abilities, you will be perfectly fine in doing damage as a vengeance juggernaut. Impale, filler, four screen, filler, vengeful slam, filler. It's a very, very simple and straightforward fixed button rotation for those three abilities. But now I need to talk about what do you fill with exactly? Well, I'm glad you asked me. Let's build a little priority tree right here. So we haven't actually talked about priority trees before in the other Empire side guides. What priority trees mean is that we're going to establish the most important filler abilities. And then we're gonna look at our priority tree and say, okay, our number one filler ability is off a of cooldown, let's use that. And then just kind of work down the tree of like, what's the most important filler abilities? So at the very top of our filler abilities here is going to be our shatter. So let me just pull up shatter real quick and throw it up here at the top. Again, shatter, boatload of damage, very useful dot to us, very long lasting dot, which is very, very nice. It is our most important filler ability. Number two is going to be our Ravage. So let's pull up Ravage, add it to our tree real quick, and say Ravage is our second most important filler ability because it will refresh and tick all of our dots. It's a boatload of damage. Our third most important ability is going to be our Proct Hue. Now, Hue will only glow every once in a while, so that's why it's kind of this far down the priority system, but if you need to, you can use the Proct Hue as your third most important filler ability. We're gonna add a fourth one down here just in the form of our Saber Throw. Saber Throw will generate a little bit of their extra rage for us, so it's a very nice filler ability to have. Um, it does a moderate amount of damage and it actually generates rage, so very, very helpful to us. The last ability, if all four of these abilities are on cooldown and you have a filler position, you can just use Vicious Slash. It's not the end of the world if you do. Um, it's just an easy way to spend that extra damage um, and while you're waiting for your more damaging abilities to come off the cooldown. So let's see how this works in action here. So if we jump in, rule number one, we don't have any rage. Let's build that rage, rule number one. So now let's start through the rotation. So impale, filler, force screen, filler, vengeful slam, filler, repeat, impale. None of these abilities are on cooldown, so filler, force screen, filler. Oh, I don't have any rage, which means which means build that rage. Vengeful slam, filler, impale, filler, force screen, filler, vengeful slam, filler, repeat, impale. I don't have any rage, generate that rage. Rage generation counts as your filler. So you don't have to, so anytime you're generating rage, that counts as your filler ability. So you don't have to be like, oh, it doesn't fit my priority tree. Generating Rage is always your number one priority if it needs to be. So again, from the beginning, Impale, Filler, Force Scream, Filler, Vengeful Slam, Filler, Impale, Filler, Force Scream, Filler, Vengeful Slam, Filler. One thing to note is that your Shatter will actually reset the cooldown of your Ravage, which is why you're able to see it used so much more often than that long 18 second cooldown you can see here. We reset the cooldown of our Ravage just by using our Impale button. It's very, very handy for us. We haven't yet talked about our Blood Rage. What Blood Rage does is it ticks all the dots on the target. So if I have all three dots on the target right here, dots, 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 I, I Kind of messed this up by not having Blood Rage on cooldown yet. Um, if I use my Blood Rage, it will tick all the dots within uh, 10 meters of me. So it's great to use after like a slam so that way you tick all the dots that you just slammed to. Um, additionally, it will start to generate Rage 
for every dot that critically ticks. It's going to give us 20 seconds of extra crit damage on our uh, all of our dots. So that is a very, very useful. It's kind of like our only offensive cooldown that we have. So uh, it's great to use after you either slam or if you're just single target, just use it right after you have all three dots in the target. So rule number one, generate rage. Rule number two, follow the rotation of impale, filler, force screen, filler, slam, filler. If you can nail that, you'll be just fine. Rule number three, follow this rotation all the way down and you should be good to go. Let's see that in action here. We're gonna put everything in the line and actually do the whole rotation. So jump in, rule number one, don't have rage. So build rage, impale, filler, force screen. We're gonna blood rage, filler, vengeful slam, Filler, repeat, impale, filler, force screen, filler, vengeful slam, filler, impale, filler, force screen, filler, vengeful slam, filler. You can see it's a very fluid rotation, which is a lot of fun actually. You're not just stuck following the same buttons over and over and over again. You actually need to put some thought into what ability is coming next, which makes for a very fun and engaging and, and just a different experience that not a lot of people are used to. So if you're looking to get into single target damage, that's perfectly fine. It's pretty easy to get into things as a cut the piece of juggernaut. Um, I'm sorry, as just a juggernaut in general. Um, one thing to note, if you end up like falling off rotation, like if you go impale, then scream, then ravage all right in a row, like, oh goodness, I, I don't have the rotation, it's all botched. That's fine, that's fine. Literally just like wait two seconds and then start over. So you can go impale, filler, force screen, filler, venture slam. You just have to like wait four seconds and then you can just start the whole rotation over again. So it's a little handy thing in, in Vengeance where it doesn't really punish you for messing up your rotation. Uh, you can just jump back right into it. You should be good to go. And that is doing single target damage on Vengeance. Sit down, practice that a dummy, and just hit buttons until you think you're doing it right. It usually kind of works itself out. I would recommend saying impale, filler, scream, filler, slam, filler, just over and over and over again out loud. That's how I learn the best at least. Uh, I'm more of a vocal learner than anything else. But what if we don't want to do single target damage? What if we want to do massive AoE damage instead and just be the master of chaos, anarchy, and all things AoE? Well then I'm glad you asked because we also have a secondary build called Cut to Pieces. How Cut to Pieces works is that every time you your bleeds critically hit the cooldown of your Vengeful Slam is reduced by one second. You can see where this might become a problem if you have something that, say, gives you extra 20% crit chance all the time, or if you had extra utilities that gave you a bunch of crit chances right away. You kind of see where this is going. You can have Vengeful Slam off of cooldown pretty much 24-7. What happens is if you change out your cut to pieces, this is the combat style I take. Uh, I swap out and I go with Bloodbound instead, that way, uh, critically hitting with the bleed effect reduces the, the cooldown of blood rage by one second. Since we have so many dots uh, standing out, especially in AOE situations, you're going to get this pretty much all the time and get that extra 20% damage or 20% crit chance thanks to our legendaries just happening more often. Additionally, you also heal uh, for 2% of your max health up to 20%. Uh, Any time that you take a dot that crits, it gives you extra healing, which is very, very nice. Um, I also swap out for deep cuts here. Deep cuts is going to give us an extra 10% crit chance in all of our bleeds for all of our bleeds, which is very helpful when we're trying to get all those extra bleeds. Our priority system is going to be shatter number one, impale number two, force screen number three. Try to get three dots in the target if possible, and then literally just hit the slam button until you can't hit it anymore. That will give you a boatload of damage and everything will die very, very quickly. Then you can fill with either Ravage or Saber Throw or Vicious Slash if you need to, and then just be reapplying your dots whenever you have like a free global cooldown. So let's demonstrate that. So I'm gonna take Vet here and she and I are gonna go on a little adventure out into the middle of nowhere. We're gonna talk to some Chiss here. Hello, hello Chiss, you're gonna come with me, you're gonna come with me, hello sir. Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me, I'm gonna break this. And then we're gonna go over here. We're gonna gather all these boys up. Thank you very much, thank you very much. We're gonna build a little bit of rage here. We're gonna have all our dots ticking. Dots, 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 dots. We're gonna get flashed. Okay, now I'm gonna do a little smash, and then every impale, and then smash, and then smash, and then smash, 
And then we have a free GCD, and then we're gonna smash, and I think we're gonna smash again. We actually ran out of people to kill here. Uh, so a little bit of dot spread, a little bit of dot spread, and then we uh, smash. Now you can see that we just, uh, we just handled like four packs of Vag with relative ease. I'm gonna keep Vet on passive here because she's doing just fine. Let's, uh, let's find some more friends to come over here and play with and just demonstrate the uh, the awesome power of the cut the pieces here. We don't really even need Vet's healing, which is kind of nutty. Uh, so then smash, come over here. We're gonna pop a couple of our DCDs and then we're gonna go smash. I'm gonna get CC, then smash. And then we have dots gonna fall off. We're gonna apply more dots and then smash. So you can see uh, it's just smash central and everything dies very, very quickly. This is the power to cut the pieces. If you want to run it in like flashpoints, uh, your friends will love you because you're going to do all the damage in the world and mobs will die very, very quickly. It's also very fun in PvP situations because if people stack up, you just smash them all to death. It's very, very fun. You don't really have to know what you're doing with cut the pieces. You just kind of apply dots and smash and hope for the best. Let's talk about our defensive cooldowns now. You can see we popped a couple of these as we were going along here. Uh, Saber Ward increases our melee and range defense by 50%. Uh, so very, very useful to us. Um, not so much in PvP. It also reduces your uh, yellow damage, which is your force tech damage, your 25%. It's okay. You know, it lasts a while. It's a good DCD, um, but it's not quite as useful as it probably needs to be compared to something like Saber Reflect, which you can take, or you can take a Mad Dash. Um, you can review those different abilities in your own time. So reflect reflects damage back to the target. Mad Dash gives you a little bit of immunity for like 1.5 seconds while you move. Uh, everyone will have access to Endure Pain. Endure Pain will give you a flat 30% extra health for, for uh, 10 seconds and give you a little bit of uh, damage reduction. But when the ability is over, you will lose that health. So if you're sitting at like 20% and uh, Endure Pain falls off, you're gonna drop to one HP. So just be aware. That health isn't permanent, it's only temporary. Finally, we have our primary DCD, which is our Enraged Defense. Enraged Defense will heal you whenever you're attacked. It's a, basically a free heal to full. Anytime you're at like 40% health, hit that Enraged Defense and you will be healed over time up to pretty much full. Let's see if we can uh, find a group of mobs to demonstrate this on. Additionally, we have our taunts. If you're in PvE, never use your taunt, but if you're in PvP, use your taunt as often as possible. Your taunt will give you a flat uh, damage, uh, I'm sorry, it will flat reduce someone's damage to everyone that's not you, which is very helpful, especially for our poor friends that we don't want them to die. We'd much rather have our friends live because if our friends are alive, that means that the enemy team will be focusing them and hopefully not us, which is very, very nice indeed. We're gonna get a nice long uh, stack of ads here so that way we can demonstrate the full power of cut the pieces. Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. You, sir, you look very friendly. All right, but I'm gonna turn you off here. All right, we're gonna pop our defensive cooldowns, hopefully get a chance to uh, demonstrate our enraged defense. A little bit of slam, a little bit of slam. This guy is not standing with his buddies. All right, there we go, slam. These guys need to all stand with their friends. Unfortunately, Vet was making friends back here instead, which is very unkind of her. Come on, Vet. Vet, you've, you've botched this entire demonstration, but so sad, so sad. Now, if we pop our enraged defense, you can see here every time that we take damage, we'll be healed back up to full, which is very, very useful, especially in like PVP situations. Uh, you can pop it in PVE. Hopefully the tank takes it off you in time or takes the threat off of you in time, but if they don't, that's okay. Uh, that's what enraged defense is for, so that way you can get that kind of free heal to full. That's the basics of using cut the pieces and the basics of juggernauts in general. If you have any questions, leave them down in the question or in the, in the comments below. Wow, I can't talk to that. It's kind of a shame. Uh, that's kind of all I have though. Other guides are coming soon, so if you are playing a different spec and you want to see it, uh, you know, let me know in the comments. I, I do read those and I do you know try to get you guys the guys you're looking for. Um, and you know, hit the subscribe button if you uh, want to support the channel, or don't. You know. You do what you want. I, uh, I don't have a smooth transition in this video, so I'm just gonna do it. Goodbye.